Hey everyone, this is Fady from Harvey Productions and welcome to another video. Today I'm specifically making this video to talk about the MRC monitor controller from Antelope. This is a brand new thing that they just released and it's compatible with their Antelope Gen 4, the Orion 32 Gen 4, and it's also compatible with one of their higher units, the Galaxy unit. Um, and I want to talk about that monitor controller, what I like about it. So I was able to get my hands on one just recently with my Gen 4 and I tested it. And as you guys have seen in some of my previous videos, I used the Grace M908 monitor controller. I'm not going to compare between both, but I'm just wanting to go through the what features does the MRC offer and is that good for you or not? And hopefully that helps you to make a decision whether to buy it or not. Obviously, uh, first, this is compatible only with the Antelope interfaces and not all of them, mostly the Orion 32 plus Gen 4 and the Galaxy one. So you can't use it with the older one, you can't use it with the Gen 3. Second thing is that unit, when you buy it, it comes with a license that unlocks the surround system DSP EQing on the Antelope unit, which is one of the new features that they implemented on the Gen 4 Orion 32 Plus, and they also implemented that on the Galaxy, which is basically able to apply room correction EQ, and then that license unlocks that feature on your interface, and then you can add uh, like boost stuff or cut stuff, and just basically allowing room correction EQ before it hits your speaker so that way you get your room as flat as you can uh, up to 16 speakers for full dolby atmos support um, which is a lot of where the music industry is heading so i think that's one of the things that they released this to allow people to work with dolby atmos controllers without having to spend a lot of money like what i spend on my m908 because these units i think they're about 8500 dollars for a full Dolby Atmos supported controller. Now you're getting one for 700 bucks, which is a killer deal. Uh, not all the features the same, but it's still as a starting point for somebody who wanting to mix and surround and have a monitor controller to support that, you can't beat that price. Okay, if we go through the actual unit itself, um, you have the basic buttons that basically shows you all the surround speakers, left and right and center and left top and bottom and sides and all that stuff. And they're all basically simple buttons that they turn these speakers on and off, like mute these speakers or solo these speakers. This is pretty straightforward. And then they have a monitor, which is the stereo mix left and right. I was shocked when I saw this because a standard protocol in monitor controller you have something like speaker A, speaker B, speaker C. So that way if I have three sets of speakers, it's a very, very simple to switch A, B, and C. Um, but they didn't do it this way. And the way that they did it is a very complex way that it's just, uh, it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, why did you guys do it that way? So the way they did this is they implemented uh, shortcuts on the unit itself and you guys can see it in the picture there's a b c d and e and what these shortcuts are the routing presets and you can you have to go in your console into the uh, antelope console and then you have to change your routing so let's say change your um, main mix left and right instead of going to monitor left and right you're going to send them to line out one and two which is going to go is which is gonna to go to your second set of speakers. So you make different routing preset, and then you save that as preset A. So now when I press A, then I know that my stereo mix is gonna to go to line output one and two, and it's gonna to go to my NS10 speakers. Then preset B, I'm gonna make my main mix go to output uh, three and four, and they're gonna to go to my Aventone cubes, for example. So you have to make routing presets, and then save them and then recall these presets using the unit. Um, I don't like this, I feel like it's too complex. Um, and then if you save over it or you lost your saving files, it's not the greatest. Also, uh, the reason why I don't like this is that when you call recalling routing and you have to change routing, there is a still uh, some delay on these recalls. And the more complex the routing is and the more recallability settings you're doing, the more time it takes, which sometimes I want to A-B stuff super quick, like a pretty clean signal that it goes tuck, 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 speaker A, speaker B, speaker C, and I'm listening to it uh, right away. Or 
I'm changing my inputs because it would follow the same protocol. They don't have different inputs on the monitor controller. It's the same idea. You have to choose one of these five presets and then on the routing, you're changing your input. For example, like my workflow, the way I a lot of time mix, I would have my min mix going to monitor left and right. And then I will take two of my reference files that the client is referencing. I'll put them in my DAW and I'll send that I'm gonna, I call it normally mix A and mix B. So I have main mix, mix A and mix B. And I'll assign those to different inputs on my monitor controller. And I can easily put chorus above a chorus above a chorus. And I can switch my inputs to listen to this chorus versus this chorus versus this chorus. And that way I can A being stuff in real time. That could be uh, A being a mix. That could be A being uh, my mix being summed through my analog summing versus not sum through analog summing. That could be my mix running through my uh, SSL fusion versus not running through the SSL fusion. It could be anything. Uh, but the idea is I need to A, B different inputs at uh, really quick. Well, for me to do this here, I'm gonna have to change the routing on the console. And then I'm gonna select different inputs, goes to the same set of speakers and save that. And then I'm gonna have to uh, assign that, for example, to preset C. And then when I click on preset C, it's gonna, instead of showing me the main mix on my barefoot speakers, it's gonna show me mix C on my barefoot speakers. I didn't like this. One, I only have five presets, which is kind of a problem because if I have multiple, like a lot of people, engineers have three, four stereo pairs of speakers that already took four of your presets, you're done. So if you have four of your presets are gone, uh, then you don't have multiple inputs. And it's not actually that simple to change inputs and outputs or, or make a combination between, I wanna play this track on this speaker and vice versa. Number two, it's the switching A and B is not super quick. There is a little bit of a, a delay between them, which is annoying when you're trying to A, B stuff. Uh, and it kind of resets your ears, um, which I don't like that. So those are the uh, couple things I didn't like about it. Another thing I didn't like about it that I was really, really shocked that they don't have it. And I even tried to maybe see if I can assign this to a shortcut or not, and I wasn't able to, is mono. You cannot press a button to listen to your mix in mono. So basically summing your left and right channel, because normally when we mix or master, I need to listen to my mix in stereo, which is 90% of the time is where people are gonna listen to. But I also wanna make sure that my mix sound okay in mono. And there is no mono button on the controller where it would sum my left and right and makes it a mono signal. Maybe you have to like do a lot of routing stuff where uh, I haven't even figured, I honestly didn't figure out how to do a mono in the routing to make it work either. And there is a mono button on the console, on the software, where you can make your mix mono on and off, but that is not assignable to the MRC, to my knowledge. I tried and it won't assign. I even tried to save a preset with it being on and off and it still won't recall that specific feature, which is the mono. Then I can't quickly switch between mono and stereo. I did not like that at all. That was actually really, really upsetting for me that they did not have that feature. Um, aside from this, it's a decent unit, hooks up USB to your um, uh, interface. It's obviously a whole lot cheaper. Uh, it's com it uses all the features of the interface. So the unit itself doesn't offer any form of conversion. It doesn't affect your quality. It doesn't lower it or increase it or anything like that. Uh, so it's a quick access to some of the uh, features on your control uh, on your interface without having to reach out to the digital console and use your mouse and touchpad and then change some of these stuff. Uh, this is basically um, my experience with the MRC. I ended up returning it. I didn't keep it because with my grace, um, I have a lot more features that I use, which I'm going to make a separate video about all what I use in my grace controller. Um, so that was not. It didn't make sense to me to use this. I tried to convince myself I can get away with this one and drop the Grace one, but I couldn't. Uh, I have a lot more features on the Grace that I actually use on daily basis that I could not let go of. I hope this helped you to understand uh, about the new MRC monitor controller from Antelope, and I hope that is helpful for you to make a decision whether you this is a good purchase for your studio or not. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comment, and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. And I'll see you guys at the next video.